Hey guys, back again, and in this video, we're actually going to be looking at how to approach a keyhole question. Now, I know these questions can be intimidating at first, but like most sections of the PAT, you can always use process of elimination combined with a little bit of clever analysis to get to the answer. So I'm going to be showing you guys a step-by-step -step approach that you can use to put yourself on the right track every single time. Alright, let's get into it. So this is the question that we're going to be tackling today and I'm going to be breaking it down and showing you guys exactly how to approach not only this question but each and every keyhole question. I don't want to waste any time so let's just get into it. Step number one is to comprehend a 3D object. The first thing you should do when you come across a question is to just quickly comprehend the object they've given you. Now I'm not talking about analyzing it and figuring out what the top, front or side views look like, no. All I want you to do is look at the object, gain an understanding of what's happening, make sure nothing is looking like an illusion, and that's it. Should take you no more than five seconds. There's nothing to it. So if I were to do it for this object, I'd see there's a big notch here, one up here, right angle here, and a little extension here. That's it. So step two is to choose a view and begin the compare and eliminate cycle. This step is best understood in action, so I'm just going to dive right in, guys. So I'm going to choose a view to begin with, and I usually pick one that shows up the most in the option choices, and in this case, it's, um, it's the top view. So next, you begin the compare and eliminate cycle, and all that means is that you look for differences between the options of the selected view. So I'm going to compare B, D, and E. So looking at B and D, uh, first thing I notice is that hmm, this little extension right here has sides of the same length on B, whereas on D, the lengths are different. And now that I found a difference between the two, I can simply reference the 3D representation and see which one I can eliminate. So looking at this, so I can see that this extension in question has sides with different lengths as seen in D. So I'm looking at these two lines right here. So that more so matches this, which means that B cannot be correct and we can cross it right off. Just like that. So this is Pat Booster's compare and eliminate technique in all of its glory. From here, you pretty much just repeat this cycle until you arrive at an answer. So now looking at D and E, let's, oh, you know what, look at that. It's actually the same object the uh, option choice E has the same mistake that um, that was present here on B so you know what we actually don't really have to analyze it we already know that that's wrong so we can automatically just cross E off so now that D is the only top view remaining we got to compare it entirely with the 3D representation to make sure nothing else is off so let's just start from here going around this looks good and then Okay, you know what? Actually, this line, this looks too short. Uh, just comparing it with the line here, I think this should be a little bit longer. Like it should come out a little bit more. And I feel pretty confident about that. So I'm actually going to cross off D as well. So now that all the top view options have been eliminated, we just pick another view and go from there. Um, all right, so looking at C, I'd say it's probably, it's probably the side view. Yeah, C is probably the side view because it looks way too long to be the front view. And A is shorter, so I'd say this one is the front view. So since we can't compare options of the same view like we did for B, D, and E, we just compare each option entirely with the reference, paying close attention to the proportion of the option choices. So starting with C, it doesn't look too bad. If anything, I'd say maybe it looks a little longer than the side view here. Um, but it's a viable option, so I'm not going to eliminate it. So let's check out A, and you know, just looking at the front three faces here, I'd say A looks too long to be the front view. Almost looks like the figure would have to extend further to the left or right for A to be right. It's close, but in this scenario, I'm more comfortable choosing C as the correct answer. So just like that, and the answer is in fact C. So this approach is pretty simple. The bulk of it is just 
picking out differences between option choices and referencing the 3D representation. It's funny because doing well in this section has actually very little to do with mentally rotating the object and visualizing its sides and all the other stuff I was going over in the previous video. It's more so about spotting differences and being clever enough to use the question and all the information it has to your advantage. And just remember that incorrect option choices are wrong either because their shape differs from the outline of the 3D representation or their proportion differs from that of the 3D representation, or both. Now, there are a couple special tricks you can use to help you with determining specific lengths or relative proportions, which I'll go over in the next video since this video is just meant to describe the approach you would use for every keyhole question. So I apologize for making this section sound really complicated in the previous video, but I had to do that in order to explain the fundamentals. Now, I highly encourage you guys to begin implementing this approach for all of your keyhole questions and, you know, customize it to your own needs, but the basic concept of the compare and eliminate cycle are sound, and if implemented properly, you can really do well on the keyhole section. With that said, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.